Exponential functions are functions which include a, a constant raised to a variable power, um, as compared to polynomial functions, which are variables raised to constant powers. So those roles are reversed. Um, exponential functions are um, an entire class of functions which, which have a great deal of um, number of useful applications in the world. Um, anything that, that tends to, to uh, grow or decay tends to be represented through some kind of um, exponential function. So this chapter, we, we uh, not only introduce those, we actually spend most of our time focusing on the inverse of exponential functions, which are called logarithms. And uh, logarithms have a um, pretty, pretty rich history to them, but uh, we're going to use them primarily to solve equations that involve exponential functions. So let me begin with a simple, very simple exponential function, y equals 2 to the x. And so, as you see, we have a, a base number raised to a, a variable power, x. And uh, now the base can be any constant number, as long as it's positive and not equal to 1. So, for example, in my book, I define a simple exponential function to have this form, where b is a constant that's positive but not equal to 1. You can see what happens if b is equal to 1, then you would have this, this function, and 1 to the x would just simply be 1. It wouldn't be an exponential function, it would be a, a constant function. So uh, we keep the base positive because negatives would be a, a real problem. For example, uh, what if you had y equals to negative 2 to the third power? Okay, that's not a problem. That would be negative 8. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. What if this was to the square root of 3 power? <laughs> now we have a real problem. Because we don't know if this is supposed to be negative or positive. Is it a complex number? What in the world is that? And so uh, it's, it's, that kind of issue is really beyond the scope of this course. So we're going to keep it simple and stick with only the positive bases where this number inside is, is positive. Um, it, it's not that these aren't, aren't in a way interesting, but they're really not, uh, I'm not aware of any applications of, of those types of exponential functions. All right, so uh, y equals 2 to the x is really one of the easiest ones to begin with. And if, if you had no idea how it behaved, then you would want to see some kind of picture of it. So I'm going to uh, form a little xy grid here, or xy chart, and we'll plug some x numbers in. If x is 1, then y is 2. If x is 2, 2 to the second is 4. 3, 2 to the third is 8. 4 would be 16. And you see what's happening here. As I increase my number, what's happening for the y's? They're, they're doubling. I mean, the next one's going to be 32. 2 to the 5th power would be multiplying 5 twos together, you get 32. Alright, so uh, these numbers are getting big rather fast, which is interesting. Let's go backwards and look at 0, and 2 to the 0 is 1, and 2 to the minus 1 is 1 half, and 2 to the minus 2 is 1 fourth, 2 to the minus 3 is 1 eighth. Alright, so this is just, you know, from the rules of exponents. If you're a little rusty about those things, when you have um, a number raised to a negative power, um, for example, 2 to the minus 2 would be 1 over 2 to the positive 2. So when you change an exponent sign, you, you um, invert the fraction or invert the base. All right, and, and a 0 power, anything raised to 0 is going to be 1. Well, almost anything. 0 raised to 0 power is a real problem. But let's not get into that now. All right, well, let's see what this looks like. And uh, it looks like all the y values are positive. And in fact, they are. Um, a, a base number, a positive number raised to any power you can think of is going to be positive. So that means all the y values are going to remain positive. All right, so I think I'll go out. Oh, about three units either way. And we'll go up to 8. 1, 2, 6, 7, 8. Here we go. 
So we'll plot these points. 1 comma 2 be over 1 up 2. And then there's 2 comma 4 and 3 comma 8. Sorry to stand in front of this, but I want to get it kind of accurate here. Um, 4 16 is above my graph. 0 1 would be right on the y-axis. And I've got 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth. All right. Now I hear my dog in the other room eating and crunching and making a lot of noise, so I'm going to close this door here for a moment. Okay, sorry about the interruption. I don't know if you could hear that, but I could. Um, she's a noisy eater. <clears throat> All right, now well, we'll look what these dots are doing. They're they're rising quicker and quicker on the right side, but on the left side, it looks like they're flattening out. And so, to connect this with a smooth curve, looks like it goes up that way. And I'm going to put a few uh, scale numbers on our graph. Any graph should always have some scale numbers. Now, I'm not a big fan of numbering every, everything on a graph. But as long as the reader can, can tell what scale you're using, that's, that's all necessary. All right, so here's, uh, here's our graph of y equals 2 to the x. And uh, it's an example of, of exponential growth. So I'm going to call this exponential growth. Now, it turns out um, a lot of things grow exponentially, especially when there's nothing to check its growth. For example, uh, populations, whether it's people, um, animals, plants, things like that. Uh, populations tend to grow exponentially when there, there's nothing to stop the growth of that population. Well, with humans, there's really nothing to stop the growth of a population unless there's a you know, very devastating war or a famine. That would slow us down, but uh, so human populations tend to grow this way. So do um, insects if they get in your house and start multiplying. If there's no predators or and if there's plenty of food, then they'll they'll take off exponentially. Uh, even companies, if a if a new industry enters a market and is um, pretty much unchallenged alone in that market, um, its growth will tend to be exponential as well. So. Uh, it's quite interesting. I like to uh, talk more about that when we get to a later section um, about this and, and where this growth comes from. All right, uh, now the, the feature on the left here where it levels off, I'm going to uh, draw a dotted line to indicate where it's leveling off to. And the dotted line coincides with the, with the x-axis. And so, now this line is called the, the asymptote. Asymptote is probably a Greek word or a Greek origin. It's A S Y M P T O T E. So, kind of an unusual looking word. You may have heard the term asymptotic or asymptotic behavior. Asymptotic behavior is, is uh, when something is, is leveling off. Um, we say it levels off asymptotically. It, it has this type of behavior. Now, it doesn't mean it's necessarily shrinking. It could be growing but leveling off asymptotically. So we'll see some examples of that. But anyway, my little um, dotted line is called the asymptote. And it indicates the, that this function is going to approach it, but not quite touch it. Because you can see these, these fractions are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. They're going to get as small as you want them to be. And in fact, the ability to make this function as small as you want to by choosing a very large negative number for x is uh, sort of a, a working definition of infinitesimal, infinitesimally small. That's a, something that's so small that it's, um, it, it, it can't be seen, literally, no matter how much you magnify it. And so infinitesimal is sort of an opposite to infinity. All right, so um, it, it levels off off here. Uh, okay, I'm just checking my book to see what else I need to do. All right. Well, there's an um, example of exponential growth. Now I'm going to uh, keep that up there and um, 
and graph a similar function. And this time I'm going to change uh, this x to a minus x. Very simple change. And this is going to um, really kind of flip all these y values here. So let me, let me fix the y values. Because now the exponents are negative, it's, it has the effect of literally inverting the function. In other words, for example, um, 2 to the minus x is the same as 1 over 2 to the x, which is also 1 half to the x power. So there's several ways to, to think about this, this new function I've got up there. But, but here, if you concentrate here, this is the original exponential growth function, but now we're looking at the reciprocal of it. All right, well, when you plug numbers in, you're going to get 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, 1, let's see, 2, 4, and 8. All right, so it will be, um, just to save time, I, I put those up there rapidly, but it would be easy for you to, I think, should be easy for you to check, verify those numbers are correct. All right, so when I plot these points on the graph, I'm going to get this kind of curve. And if you think about it in terms of symmetry, it's, it's been reflected around the y-axis. In fact, when you take a function and replace x with negative x, that has the effect of, of flipping it or reflecting it around the, the y-axis. I hope I said y-axis a minute ago. All right, so here is y equals 2 to the minus x, and it's an example of exponential decay. Exponential decay. Because it's shrinking down to nothing. And so it has the same asymptote, the, the x-axis asymptote, except it, it blends in, lands on the right side. So there's an example of exponential decay. Those, those examples aren't quite as prevalent in the natural world or, or the man-made world, but they do show up in a few places. Um, radioactive elements decay exponentially. I'll talk about that in a future section, and we'll work a problem with that. And also, uh, if you're into electronics, a capacitor is a little device which stores electricity, and when you discharge the capacitor, the electricity flows out according to this exponential decay pattern. And there's uh, other, other places where this shows up, but not quite as, as common as, as exponential growth. Um, okay, well, uh, oh yeah, here's another one. When you um, pluck a string on a musical instrument or, or uh, you know, hit a key on a piano, the string vibrates, it's set into vibration. And if you just leave the string alone, it's going to continue to vibrate, but it'll, it'll slow, it will uh, not vibrate as as much up and down. It'll still vibrate the same frequency, but the, the high and lows of the vibration will shrink. And if you were to plot that out, you would see that the, that, that would decay exponentially also. So it was a lot, it, there's another place where that would, that would show up. All right, well, here's uh, just a, a brief introduction to, to simple exponential functions, and we'll go on and do something a little less simple here in the next uh, video clip.